Uh, James, tell me a bit about you know, why the BTO is so keen on good citizen science. So when we're thinking about big issues like climate change, something that's happening over a long time frame, you know, we need a long run of data to be able to understand what impact that's having. And we can only achieve that by getting people, citizens, volunteers to help us collecting those data, only by having an army of bird watchers, of people going out recording things in the countryside, right across the country year after year, can we get that long-term data? And that data is telling us really important and crucial facts about what's going on out there. And what about bringing new people in? Because obviously there were people like yourself and myself, we've been at it since we were kids. Yep. We're always counting and measuring things and, and we submit our data. But what about bringing new people into this? How do we enable them to think, yeah, no, I can be a part of it? That's a, it's a really good uh, challenge. And I think that's something that's that's critically important for us to be able to do. And this is where the, you know, the project like What's Under Your Feet, working with schools is, is, is I think, an important step in enabling us to do that. You know, o over the last two years of the project, you know, we've had over 500 schools. If that's a class of 30 children or so in each of those schools, that's getting on for 15,000 school kids who, following our methods, have been digging bits of their school playing fields up, counting the earthworms, counting the leather jackets, sending us that information. And then we've been able to analyse that and look at the patterns right across the country of how the densities of these soil invertebrates varies, how their abundance and availability in the surface layers of the soil, which is where the blackbirds and the starlings and the song thrushes can access them, how that changes through the year. And it's providing really novel insights in terms of uh, how the food that's available for, for these birds and how these invertebrates, which of course are really crucial for soil processes, for farming, for all these, all these things, how their populations change through the year and across the country. So the BTO gets its data, the BTO scientists get their papers, that's great. We all get to learn what we need to know about climate change. What do the kids get? The great thing about citizen science is you engage with the natural world by collecting the data. You experience it, you understand it, you get the issues in a way that reading it in a textbook or answering an exam you're, question. You're part of it, it. Yeah, basically. Exactly. You, you've become part of it, haven't and you? So one of the most exciting things for me in my job over the last year or two has, you know, has been this project and the fact that we are um, engaging with so many school children, not just for the sake of it, but the data that they have provided us with is real data for a real scientific project and it's um, you know, it being, being used to uh, be turned into a scientific publication. So just a few, couple of weeks ago, we've had our first paper accepted using this data. So this is real science that these, that these children are, are, are being involved with, which for me is incredibly exciting and hopefully inspiring for them as well. And what's next for the project? So we're starting to, to analyse our data, try and get more invertebrate data and try and put all these pieces together to really nail what's going on. And then that can inform us to know what to do about it. If there are issues with water availability, you know, what does that mean in terms of how we manage the countryside? Other ways in which we can kind of try and maintain water levels, particularly during the hot, dry summer weather. It's a win-win because in the process of doing this and understanding it as we need to, as you pointed out, we're also engaging up to 15,000 young people with wildlife, which perhaps otherwise they wouldn't do. Yeah. And they're beginning to understand their impact on the environment um, and how they can engage with it and get something back from it. So in terms of a school, all you need is a grass and some basic tools and you're in business with yes, this one, aren't absolutely. you? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's cheap and easy to do. Yep. We've got to do it, mate. <laughs>